There's a song that says everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to what? Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to forgive. You see, you can't get to heaven without forgiving. It's impossible. So we could substitute the word die and put forgive. Because if I ask all who wants to go to heaven, everybody should raise their hand. And I'm not going to answer that question because I don't need to confirm that. We are here because we all believe that there is a God and we want to see him when he comes again. So we all want to go to heaven. But we must be willing to forgive. So for that reason, our message for today is entitled Burying the Hatchet, Let Bygones Be Bygones. We've all heard these phrases, bury the hatchet, let bygones be bygones. Consider Joseph who was sold into slavery by his brothers, not stepbrothers, brothers. Instead of seeking revenge, when he had them on his tongue, now, I, I, this is not all, oh, I could catch him just by inch here. My Joseph could have mashed them up. There's a car to there, I could mash your car. Joseph could have mashed them up. He had them right when he needed them. He could have stayed to them like we like to see. But when he had them there, what did Joseph say? Stick with me here. Scripture tells us, Genesis 5, 20. You intended to harm me. Come on now. Now this is the best part. But God intended it for good. Amen. Check Amen. that now. Amen. You, you see what just happened there? You intended to sabotage me on the job, but God intended it for good. Amen. Amen. No, 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 no. I, I hear the amens coming out, but it's something that we must highlight. Joseph never forgot his God. No. All right then. Joseph never turned away from his God. Joseph worshipped God even among the heathen people yeah. to the point that he was tossed into prison for rejecting a woman. Yes, a woman. Back in my younger days, he said, what's wrong with you? You stupid. What's wrong with you? And you run it? Nah. That could have never been me. That's what he would have said. Joseph thought, oh, I could do this thing and sin against God. This is the kind of God when he says all things work together for good. It's for that type of people there. Eh? Not that people who stand in with their foot on the one side and the other on the other side and say, God, let it work for good. Now walk. walk. Joseph was as straight as an arrow. And when you're as straight as an arrow, anything your enemies, blood can do against you, work for good. Amen. This is scripture. You intended it for evil. But God was saying, yeah, the study thing walking out. It's so we're going to work it. That is the level of faith that we as Christians must aspire to. Because if we aspire to that, it should be easier to forgive our brothers and our sisters. Amen. Brother Alfred and I am using you because I know we got good blood. Eh? You know, but we're not taking it to see. What you have to do? But we can't say. Brother Alfred, you intended to harm me with this thing, man. But hey, don't tell God bless me by your actions. That is the level of faith that Christians today who are forgiven should cherish. As a matter of fact, we say this joy that we have, this is why we should have a joy. There should be no sorrow, no cloud over our heads, overwhelming us. Because everything, when you step in with God, works in your favor. Everything. And I'm not talking about water at all. It works to yes, your good, to your benefit. So let me continue. So you think Joseph was bad? No. What about Jesus? Yeah. What about Jesus? On the cross, they killed him. What did he say? Lord, forgive them. No one here has ever killed you. But yet, thief mom, five dollars. When my thief five dollars, how long ago? But 20 years ago, boy. We hold on to the thing as if it happened yesterday. Every day we recreate even over and over in our heads. Why? We're playing it, giving it fuel to fester, to grow within us, holding the thing hostage. 
the honorable. That is wickedness and you're doing yourself a grave injustice. If you don't hear anything I say, let it go. That hostage there, now will bring you no money. Let that hostage go. Forgiveness might not change the offender, but it will change you. Again, I say to you, I went into this conversation with Brother Alvern, and I say to myself, why are you nothing against him? Boy, ignoring him. Me want to really see him. But when I left that conversation, I felt light. And I had to say to myself, it's not about him. Mm -hmm. It's about you, me. Amen. It's Thank about God. you and your relationship with God. Yes. Forgiveness and restoration. So forgiveness is more than letting anger go. It's about rebuilding what was broken. James 5.16 tells us, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that they may be healed. Notice the word healed is used. Forgiveness is not just a moral obligation. It's a pathway for both parties to be involved, to seek reconciliation, and to make amends. That's what forgiveness does. Think about Peter again, John 21, 15 to 19. He denied Christ three times. Jesus didn't shame him or hold him to his head. Yeah, he denied me. Uh, you remember? Don't talk about You remember? Jesus didn't do that. He didn't do that. And as some of us, we hold it in our back pocket, according to my sister, we bury the actions, but as soon as I get, wait a second, you're ready to go on because you let go of the hatchet. As soon as it's said, oh, you don't talk too long. Forgiveness means letting go. He sought Peter out and reaffirmed him in his love and restored him into leadership. Jesus' forgiveness went beyond words. It gave Peter a fresh start, a renewed purpose, and a confidence to lead boldly. I'm telling you, it was eating Peter up, you know. It was eating him up. Love declaration. I will never. Eating him up. And in his worst moment, me Lord. Now, what does forgiveness look like in our lives? Because it's nice for us to view forgiveness through the lens of these Bible practices that sometimes we exemplify and say, ah, they were mighty men. But let's bring it to today's context. You see, imagine someone in our church, at work, or a family member who has wronged you. I don't have to go too far. We can just stick right within that bracket right here. Everyone here has been wronged, some way, some form, or fashion. Oh, yes. We have experienced it. So let's keep right here within that bracket. Forgiveness does not mean pretending that nothing happened. So let me say that again. It doesn't mean you pretend that nothing happened. It means extending grace. Extending grace. You understand what I'm saying? Giving them a chance to grow and work towards restoration. Galatians 6, 1 reminds us to restore those who have fallen into sin with harshness, with reproach, by holding them hostage. No. Bring them into restoration through gentleness. Restoration requires, and we said these words all through today, I, I was listening, I was listening. It requires humility, it requires empathy, it requires choosing to believe the best about someone. Even when they let you down. Joy, joy, yeah. Now you'd say, man, that's a hard task, but again I say to you, God does it for us over and over again. I can tell you many times God says, shock you. He will come true, and shock you didn't come true. Shock you let him down. But every time he keeps believing that I will get it right. And it's so that we have to treat our fellow brothers and sisters. Yes, they have wronged us. Yes, they slipped up 19, 20 times. But 
whether or not they want to talk to you, don't hold it hostage. Forgiveness is about you and your relationship with God. Let them deal with that. Don't hold it hostage. Seek to make amends, Brother Dietra. Hey, I, I, I said something to you, and you know, I, I think it, it upsets you. And let Brother Dietra, we want to talk to you. But at least you try. At least you reach out. Maybe the Spirit of God will prick him and say, hey, how you handled that situation was not the best way. That's your but that's not for you to decide. What you should decide is extending grace. Because you want to get grace at Everybody wants to get grace. Forgiveness. Yes. Forgiveness is an antidote to bitterness. It tears down the walls of resentment that separates us and makes a room for us to love, trust, and unite to grow. God restores us when we come to Him. He calls us to extend the same restoration to others. Now, forgiveness is not always the end of the story. Sometimes it's the beginning of restoration. God desires us not only to forgive, but to restore what was broken. This is where the concept of letting bygones be bygones becomes us. Special relevant. Let it go of the past and trust it to move forward into a better and healthier relationship with said individual. Joseph and his brothers, the prodigal son. These are all practical, biblical references that we can use to depend on for our daily situation. You think somebody will be mad? We always say, Whatever you think you're going through, somebody will get it ten times worse. What's worse? Whatever you think you're going through, someone is experiencing it in a more severe form or fashion. And these stories show us that. And yet somehow, these vessels, through God, can find it in their heart to forgive. So what about me and you? What about me and you? Can we then say, just like that, I can let go and let God? Restoration doesn't mean erase the scars, but it allows us to heal the flourish, to heal and flourish. It's a reflection of God's power to restore and to redeem. You see, another thing that we have to talk about now is forgiveness and confrontation. Forgiveness and confrontation. Forgiveness does not mean ignoring the wrong or pretending it never happened. Sometimes forgiveness begins with confrontation. Not to attack, but to address. I think I have to put that in because when we hear confrontation here, no. Sometimes you have to confront a problem. You have to let substitute the word. You have to address a matter, address the issue at hand. That is what it entails. So sometimes it begins with confrontation to attack the issue honestly and lovingly. Hey, let's clear the air on this matter. What did you see and what did I see? How did you interpret my actions and what did you interpret my actions to me? Let's start there. Let's build the dialogue from there. Jesus himself instructs us in Matthew chapter 18, verse 15. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault. Just between the two of you. If they listen to you, then you have won them over. I think the KJV said then you have gained the brother. So what does this look like in our daily lives? It means going to the person who have hurt you with a heart to seek understanding and reconciliation. It's not about revenge and it's not about self-justification. And that is something I really wrestled with. Wanted to feel justified. Yes! It ain't right now, man. Everything square up. No. Let go and let God. 
It's not about you feeling justified in the moment. It's not about you feeling as though, yes, all right, the score is settled. It's about choosing to value your relationship enough to talk about an uncomfortable conversation or, or go through an uncomfortable conversation with that individual. Too often, we sweep things on the ground and we explode in anger. Neither of that is good. It's not about sweeping. We have to address this issue. And I know, you know, in families, in the church, we have a habit of sweeping things on the ground. No, let's talk about what was uncomfortable. Let's talk about what you said. This brings us closer. It helps us to understand one another better. So consider Peter in your own life. And understand that the urgency of forgiveness is something that we have to understand why it's important. You see, it's important because, like I said, we can't get true to the word if you have that one speck of it. No matter what you do, you could cure cancer, you could walk from now to, to cure Ebola, you could do anything that is great and grand in the eyes of man in terms of achievement. Unless you forgive, you're able to take it too much more off your tree without asking, you're not making it through that door. You're not making it through that door. Too much more? That's what you really want to do something to the kingdom of God for? Holding on to that? Think about how stupid it sounds when you think about it. I miss heaven because I didn't forgive the person for telling a lie to me. Think about how stupid that sounds. You have an eternity to gain. An eternity to gain. And we let these trivial matters stand between you and Jesus. We say nothing between my soul and my Savior. But clearly, we keep it a lot between us and God. Because if nothing was truly between you and God, there would be no animosity between you and the people in your lives. None whatsoever. Unforgiveness is a prison. Holding on to grudges and resentment doesn't punish the other person. And this is where this is where it's so backward. You're not punishing them by holding on to it. Unforgiveness punishes you. It's like carrying a heavy weight that God never intended you to bear. But by forgiving, you set yourself free. That is the power of forgiveness. And I encourage you, if you have never tried it, try it today. Amen. You're going to leave this church feeling, if you think you came in feeling dapper, if you think you came in feeling smooth and light, then I promise you, you're going to feel different walking through those books today. Just try it. Don't take my, what do you have to lose? Is either I'm a liar or is either telling you the truth? I tell you, I'm telling you the truth. Huh? I know for a fact that I'm telling you the truth. So you test and see that God is good. Jesus warned in Matthew chapter 6, verse 14 to 15. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive you. Not a suggestion, it's a command. We have to forgive in order to be forgiven. That is simple. That is obvious. So, how does this translate to our everyday life? Number one, pray for those who hurt you. Pray for those who hurt you. Don't, don't pray for silently see them fall. But I tell you, let's think deep here. We sit down here and within us sometimes we like to see them dog fall. Yes, it's good for them. I remember what they do to me. The wicked man, the too wicked. No, pray for those who hurt you. Leave them in the hand of God. Amen. Oh. And God fight your battles. Yes, man. No, you don't have to carry that weight. Matter of fact, you have a bodybuilder saying, I will carry it for you. Yes. You can't carry that. So why are you struggling? Yes. What are you struggling for? Prayer is a powerful tool. It changes our perspective. And it softens our heart. So when we bring the people who have wronged us before God, leave it in God's hands and He will rectify the situation. Not in your time. Very important. 
Don't pray that God fixes the situation tomorrow. No. God's time and your time is two different times. Let go and let God do what he does best. Work things out for good. You intend it for evil, but God. There's the only one he accepted today. But God intended it for good. Communicate honestly and humbly. So forgiveness often begins with an honest conversation. Oftentimes we go into it with brash feelings of explosive emotions and then the next person catch a vibe of your vibe and huh, you're shouting for me too, you are shouting for you too. And then it becomes a shouting match. And then we are odds, we were already divided, but now you in Russia and I all the way in Ukraine. Nah, nah Russia and Ukraine too close to Ah, but then technically they look at the map and you're fine. Yes, Mantra, thank you, thank you. You are all the way in Russia and in Mantra now, just because of how we start the conversation. So sometimes the conversation should be open with honesty and humility. Begin that conversation, express your feelings. You know what I'm teach us in school? Whenever you go to someone, don't say, you, Nishra, did this. You did that because what this year is attack. Yes. I get an attack. Yes. So he don't pull out and say, Well, I will attack back. Attack get attack. But if I go to Brother Brown and I say, hey, Brother Brown, you know, I truly felt offended when you said this and that. What he hears is, I was hurt by the actions he did. It's not science, you know. What is that here? Honesty and humility. You're not going with a confrontation or a spirit to confront and fight them. You're going humbly. Hey, what you said there, I didn't appreciate what you said or what you did uh, did not reflect well on me or whatsoever the situation is. Let go of the need for revenge. Romans 12, 19 reminds us that vengeance belongs to the Lord. Trust God to bring you justice in his timing. And I say to you, God's timing. We want revenge. Oh gosh, man. I know you're seeing you know, and you see we're watching. We're watching us dictate your mind. When you watch those movies, you see one man army going up against the whole army just in the name of revenge. <laughs> just in the name of revenge. <laughs> The names of some of them taken, man got to get kidnapped, and man went to a whole mafia. Come on now. God is not asking you to do that. God is asking you to go and sharpen your skills, to go and learn this and that and that just to get your revenge. God said, hey, leave it with me. I will handle it. And if you look at the revenge plot, it's a selfish plot. Because man wants to feel good for the wrong that was done to him. That is what it is. We have no business in that plot. We have no business in that camp. Come, God got to go back. Amen. Be patient with yourself and with others. Now, I thought it necessary that as I explored how to present this topic, that we have to look at the word patience. Patience. Forgiveness is a process. Sometimes we expect that when you say forgive, a perfect example, eh? perfect example. Time after time, a son is in this phase where he's hitting and he would hit me. You know? And I mean, I'm a bigger man to his smaller frame. But when he catch you off guard, it's hot. Oh, it's hot. And every time I would say, don't do that, don't do that. And then I catch myself like, nah, vex no. I vex. But I have to be patient with the young lad. He's learning. Likewise, the individual you may have been harmed by is learning how to walk with God. They're learning how to let go of those acts of the flesh. See, you can't say, well, I forgive you today, Brother Albert. And as soon as you do something, you see, that's why I'm not forgiving you. Be patient. We all go into a journey. We all on this journey. And it's a process and it's a path that we have to follow. Everyone learns at a different pace. It's not an excuse to excuse them from their wrong. But if you covered it right, you confront it humbly. 
You don't go tooth for tooth. Finally, remember God's grace. You gotta remember God's grace is sufficient. Yeah. Yeah. We have to remember. Freely have we received, freely shall we give. At the end of the day, it even came out in our lesson. Who are we patterning ourselves after? If we pattern ourselves after Satan, then we need not change. We could just allow ourselves to be taken in by the enemy. But if we're patterning ourselves after God, then we have to confront the reality that the way we're going about things may not be the best way. And our action is causing an equal and opposite reaction. So we have to say to ourselves, let God take the lead. I am following God's lead. If I am following God's way, God will handle my qualms. That's the way it is. He's your big brother. Nothing else. Yes. So for my friends, my visitors, my brothers and my sisters here today, I want us to be able to say, everybody wants to go to heaven. And everybody will love to forgive. Because that's the only way we're going to get there. And you are here today because you believe God is able to forgive you. Yes. You are here. I am here today because I believe God is able. I don't even take the light off and put it on me. I am standing here because I believe God is able to forgive me. Amen. And he does it every day without. Listen, even before I have to ask. I feel God is something. I said, man, you don't even have to ask. You don't have it. But we got to be sincere. And, and, and for those of us who have wronged individuals, when you go to those individuals, you have to be sincere. You can't be pretentious. Oh, but you know, I want to start to throw you all over. No, you have to be sincere in your walk with God. That's the only way. So there's no halfway forgiveness. There's no measured forgiveness. It's either all or nothing. I forgive or I don't forgive. Let go and let God be patient. Learn to walk with your kitchen. Humbly put it before God. Hurt and joy and him to fix it. So today as we celebrate, I want us to commit to burying the hatchet. According to my dear sister, don't leave the handle sticking out. Bury it and forget where you bury it. Say they are taught to go back and go for it. You can't remember if you put it in Basis, if you put it in Manja. Matter of fact, when you bury it, bury it in the daylight. In the middle of a bush somewhere. Just walk, walk, walk and drop it. Deep, deep. And don't look back to trace your steps of how you got there. You just walk in the next direction. Let go and let God. I promise you, your relationship with God is going to be much better. Oh. Even as you come back to God, your relationship with Him is also going to be renewed when you understand Amen. the fact that this is how God treats you. Amen. Amen. And the sad reality is, and this is sad reality, and this is the closest here. If God was to do us like we do people, oh God. What we done, long time. What we done to us? If we God was time. to do me, like I do plenty of people in my life, I don't talk to them. I see the car coming on me, I take this one. If God was to do me that, I would have been on my knees praying, Lord, I want to thank you. I want to talk to you. <laughs> Every day, tell me I'm doing differently. I still come back with the same thing again. But Lord, no. That is not how God operates with us. God let us go. And as far as the east is from the west, so far does he mercy it from us. And that is what we must be. And if we have that spirit, just a handful of us have that spirit in the community, God be the glory. The whole world is trying to be a different peace. People will be wondering, what? What? Nothing gets under the man's skin, you know? Nothing gets under his skin. I do him this, I do him that. And he's still, what is it about you, brother and girl? That makes you so committed towards keeping me in your presence, even when I do you so much wrong. And this is where our actions witness what I would say every day. We think so. To God be the glory. I encourage you and I implore you. Bury the hatchet. 
Don't leave the animals to get out. Let bygones be bygones. Let's move forward in love and unity. Let's move forward trusting that God will handle all the ones that we have on his own mind. No half, only full day. Please bow your heads as we pray. Oh gracious Lord Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you for your bounties. Lord, we want to thank you, O oh God, for your mercies and your forgiveness. Father, you've forgiven us time and time again from things that we would say it's deplorable, from things that we would say it's unforgivable. And Lord, yet you extend the hands of mercy towards us. Father, help us to understand the relationship that you have with us and help us to extend that relationship with the people within our church, within our family, within our communities, oh God. Lord, we know that you are capable of righting all wrongs. We know that you are capable of renewing our hearts and our minds. And we ask, so oh God, as tough as it is, as challenging as it be, help us to realize that this is life eternal matters that we're playing with. If there was another way, then maybe we could have hold on to this. But Lord, there is no other way but to forgive. Father, I pray that you will continue to be with us. I pray that you will continue to let your words to speak to us. I pray, oh God, as hard as it is, that you will continue to guide us to be a beacon in this community. Not shying away from the work that you've given us, but urging us to do our part. This is all for you. Your name, we have so long. Amen. 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 Amen.